Hi, and uh, welcome back to fleetmusic.blogspot.com. Uh, this is the first. Uh, this is the first video in um, a series of videos where I'll be looking at uh, drum uh, synthesis. Um, I think the first uh, few tutorials we're looking at uh, synthesizing kind of quite basic uh, sounds. Then we're going to be looking at uh, after that we'll be looking at some more interesting, uh, less typical sounds, and then. I think the last stage in in this in this large post, uh, we're going to be looking at producing some uh, interesting and useful uh, loops. Uh, that's the idea, anyway. Um, so let's get started. Um, I'm going to basically chuck a drum rack in, and we're going to be using this to um, just to build up a really comprehensive drum rack uh, with lots of uh, drum sounds in uh, that we can always use and go back to. Uh, uh, yeah, there's sort of two things that we're going to be kind of, I think it's quite useful to bear in mind. One, that a lot of the sounds we're going to be uh, producing are going to be using um, sine waves. And secondly, we're going to be making good use of the uh, pitch envelope uh, facility within Operator. So uh, let's actually just look at the actual chains first. Um, and if we select in out, uh, Let's just. I'm just going to talk through the drum rack quickly. So, what's happened? We've dropped a. Um, we have dropped an instance of operator onto C1, which means that when I play C1 on my keyboard, um, we hear a tone. Uh, what's actually then happening is, well, what's happening before we hear that tone is that uh, in the drum rack, that note, that C1 note, is being uh, transformed into a middle C, which is that middle C tone we hear now. Um, so that kind of, uh, for, well, I mean, that presents us with two choices. Either we can always um, use the tunings um, and have tunable, pitchable drums. So we can, you know, we can pitch our drum sounds up or down. Um, or we can uh, design them so that they're the product of fixed tunings or combinations of both. Um, and I think during these, or well, over these the course of these sort of 10 or so examples I'm going to do, uh, I will do both, I think. Uh, <laughs> but uh, there are arguments for uh, both methods. Um, yes, that, okay, let's, uh, let's close that down. Um, and uh, get that back up. Um, so the first few sounds we're going to be looking at are some snares. Let's call it snare one. And just as a reference, I um, I, I thought it'd be a good idea just to look at um, some sort of well-known sounds, and obviously the the sounds associated with the eight hundred eight drum machine are kind of you know out there, and they're well, they're very much in our kind of conscience really, and you hear them all the time. Um, and I actually came across in my research for this, I came across. Uh, this posting on, on trashaudio.com where there's a free uh, TR808 sample pack uh, with some nicely recorded samples. So I'll uh, post up that link. So you, um, if you haven't come across it already, it's a kind of useful resource. Not, you know, just as, well, I'm mean, here to using it as a reference. So, um, and just looking at actually, when I was going through preparing stuff this tutorial I just go through and uh, <coughs> see how these sort of sounds were constructed and what were the predominant um, or where the predominant frequencies and, and or pitches in the sound were um, just sort of unpicking the sound so with that in mind let's uh, move on to our bits of sound design and start with this snare our first snare. Um, our first snare is going to be really simple. So we're going to move into uh, the main shell and drop the voices down to one. This is something we're always going to do uh, just to save CPU resource. Um, in effect, you know, we're we're just playing or well, we're designing one shots. Uh, we're not we're not designing uh, sort of polyphonic sounds. We're just designing things which are going to have receive one MIDI note and produce one tone. Uh, we're not producing sounds which we're going to want to play as chords or anything. So. Um, Hence, we drop the voices down to one. Uh, we're going to select this algorithm. Uh, so we're going to have our sounds going to be composed of two 
components. It's going to have the body, which is going to be courtesy of oscillator one, which is just um, going to be a uh, where we're going to drag down sustain, pull in the decay to well, it's about one fifty or something for now. The next part of the sound is going to come courtesy of the noise loops, which is Ableton's kind of pitchable, um, pitchable uh, noise as opposed to the standard noise that you have as another option. Uh, we're going to right click in the shell of oscillator B and say copy envelope from oscillator A. And here we can hear that noise coming through. And obviously we're playing this at uh, C, but you can, you know, bump it up tune it to whatever the whatever the key of the track is or just tune it however you want it uh, to be. Um, so now we have those two components, the noise and the actual body. We're then going to turn on the pitch envelope and we're going to, uh, let's give it some moderate amount of pitch envelope and now we can hear the effect of that. We're going to um, bring in the decay around about 100, 130, anything around that kind of region is, is kind of what we're after. We're going to uh, bring in the initial write down and uh, bring up the P. Just so we get that kind of snap. So there's our first super, super basic snare. Um, I should also add that, you know, we can change the quality quite simply just by um, messing with the time uh, parameter here and also you know we can maybe dial in um, dial in um, some uh, setting for the velocity uh, amount what this will do the, the, the harder you hit your your MIDI controller the more of the noise will come through into your sound so if we low velocities High velocity, we get a lot more noise. So let's dial in a more, more sensible sound. Uh, okay, that's our first snare done. Then we're going to move on to uh, the second snare, which is going to be slightly more complex. Um, and it's going to use a bit of FM. So to um, yeah, so we're going to use this algorithm. I think we're going to use uh, three oscillators, so we're going to turn it off. We're going to go in here, and as always, turn down voices to one. Um, so starting from the bottom, we, we've got, uh, we're actually going to contradict what I said all about this, the sine waves, and we're going to go for a uh, square four wave. Uh, then we're going to actually let's maybe let's pitch this up to nine nine semitones. Um, let's go into the envelope shell and then bring the same right down. Bring you know bring dial in a typical amount for the decay, so anything from a hundred to two fifty mil milli, uh, milliseconds. You know you'll know when it's right. It's pretty straightforward. Um, so let's work our way up. We're gonna go into I'd say to B, bring up the level, let's say minus 18 at the moment, and select a sine wave. We already have a sine wave. Uh, then let's get it nice and metallic. Let's bring a uh, square, four, another square four in, and then bring up the level to taste. So there, you know, you can hear the classic kind of FM metallic kind of characteristics coming through. Um, Sounding quite cow belly, but you know. <laughs> and uh, yeah, let's bring the tone down maybe a bit. Um, we're not actually going to do anything with uh, the pitch envelope in this instance. Uh, obviously, now we what we don't have in the sound is any kind of noise uh, component to it. So we're going to do that actually by using the vocoder, and in particular. Um, it's noise uh, generator. So what we're going to do and drop down, down the bands to 16 and we're going to bring down the dry wet to let's say about 23%. So only 20 or 20, 
25%. So the only 25% of the of the signals being affected by this and having noise added to it. We're actually these levels here are represent our 16 um, bandpass filters, and so we're just going to drop the level down so that these components of the frequency spectrum aren't being aren't being affected. And here we can just you know play around with it, but um, the idea is I'm. I'm going to suggest is that you only want the noise towards the upper end of things and not in the lower um, uh, aspects of the sound. Um, these here we can, with this sort of XY uh, pad, we can change the characteristics of the noise. We're going to bring up the depth a little more. We're going to leave the tack where, it's as, where it is. See what you think with the foreman, just uh, adjust to suit and uh, keep the release roughly where it is. The next bit, uh, next step, we're going to bring in a redux. We're going to select soft down sampling and uh, bring up uh, bring up to about five. We're then going to uh, bring in a frequency shifter. We are going to dial in an amount of uh, seven, let's say, just hang on that, uh, and then keep the rate or drop the rate down, keep it nice and slow. You can hear the stereo movement. If you want to get rid of that, just drop that down um, to zero. Um, uh, frequency, we're actually going to tune it. Uh, we're going to Turn it to ring first. Uh, we're going to tune it to, to go by ear. I mean, you can be strategic and tune it to the actual pitch uh, that's coming out, or you can just tune it, tune it to suit really. Um, but then we're not going to do anything with fine, and we're just going to adjust the dry wet to suit. There you've got quite a nice metallic, nice metallic snare, um, and again, obviously, you know, you can make it tighter, snappier, fair, just to bring the time down or bring it up. Uh, if you increase the level tone, you'll bring you up the kind of brightness of the general sound. Although obviously we've got quite a bright sound anyway. And as I said, if you wanted to get rid of um, the the kind of uh, the kind of stereo imaging that you're getting from the LFO uh, section, you can drop the amount down to zero. Um, but a subtle amount, a little amount goes, I don't know, I think it's beneficial to overall sound. But yeah, that's our slightly more complex snare. So I'm going to stop this video and uh, I'll see you in the next video where I'll be looking at some more snares and uh, looking at uh, some uh, insert or return effects and actual general processing for these drum sounds. Okay, cheers and uh, see you in uh, video 2.